So this stuff really works? Certainly does. Oh, well, lots of luck! Oh! In a previous video, we dissected a solar panel and looked at how it converts solar energy into electricity. Today, we're going to look at the differences between the two most popular solar panels, the black monocrystalline panels and the blue polycrystalline ones. Let's first look at how monocrystalline panels are made. Sand or silicon dioxide is reduced with carbon in an electric arc furnace at temperatures greater than 1,900 degrees Celsius or 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit. This gives us 99% pure silicon and carbon dioxide. But this silicon isn't pure enough, so it's refined even further using the Zokralski method. A rod-mounted seed crystal is dipped into molten silicon and slowly pulled upwards while being rotated. This allows 99.999999% pure silicon to solidify into an ingot up to 2 meters in length and several hundred kilograms in weight. These ingots are sliced into thin wafers, 180 to 350 micrometers thick. Older solar panels were made from round wafers, but these had a lot of wasted space between them, so the edges were cut to make them rectangular. That's why all monocrystalline panels have angled edges. Monocrystalline panels are very expensive to produce, and there's a lot of waste generated when you cut a circle down to a square. So scientists invented another way of making solar panels, using silicon fragments, and that led to the invention of polycrystalline panels. The purified silicon crystals are melted in a large container for 20 hours and then slowly cooled over three days. This large block of purified silicon is then cut down and sliced into wafers. Next, we'll look at their appearance. The monocrystalline panels are homogeneous black or dark blue because they are made of a single one-directional crystal. The polycrystalline panels are lighter blue because when the many crystals of silicon cool, they make a fractal, multi-directional pattern. When light hits the panel, it appears to shine. However, with recent improvements in production, polycrystalline panels are much less shiny and look almost the same as monocrystalline panels. The two also differ in terms of sustainability of production. The manufacturing process for monocrystalline panels is slow and energy intensive and it's very expensive. It also generates a lot of waste which makes it the least sustainable type of panel on the market. As we discussed earlier, all the circular wafers are cut down into octagonal cells and all the leftover material is either discarded or it's melted down to make another ingot. Polycrystalline panels on the other hand generate very little waste and they're much cheaper to produce which makes them more sustainable. The efficiency of these two panels is also different. When monocrystalline panels were first invented in 1941, they had less than 1% conversion efficiency, but it has now reached 26.7% in a lab under ideal conditions. Beat it! But their average efficiency is between 17 and 22%, making it the most efficient type of panel in the market. Since they are made of a single, continuous, unbroken crystal, there are no barriers or grain edges. The electrons have more room to move around, which equates to more electricity generated. Polycrystalline panels used to be a lot less efficient 10 or even 5 years ago, but they can now convert around 15% of solar energy into electricity. This has been achieved by increasing light absorption, decreasing the recombination losses at the surface, and optimizing the doping of different layers. Related to their efficiency is their output. To measure and compare them, I bought a Renogy monocrystalline panel and a rich solar polycrystalline panel of Amazon. The Renogy panel measures 23.7 by 19.6 by 1.2 inches. It weighs 8.8 .8 pounds. It has 33 solar cells. It has a maximum power of 50 watts and an efficiency of 21%. The rich solar polycrystalline panel measures 26.8 by 20.5 by 1.2 inches, so it's slightly larger. It weighs 12.4 pounds. It has 36 cells, a maximum power of 50 watts, and an efficiency of 13.4%. I was able to measure their output in a roundabout way. Both the solar panels had MC4 connectors, 
so I bought extension cables that also had MC4 connectors on one end and bare aluminum wire on the other. Then I used some spare cable that I had with battery clips on one end and bare copper wire on the other. Finally, I wrapped the bare copper wire to my multimeter test leads. It obviously wasn't ideal, but this method gave me a consistent reading. I left both the panels out in the sun for 30 minutes to warm up and then tested the voltage that they produced. The monocrystalline panel had a steady reading of 19.24 volts when it was laid flat on the ground. However, when I started tilting the panel, so it would be perpendicular to the sun's rays, the reading went up to 19.5 volts. At a certain point, the panel was no longer perpendicular to the sun and the reading went back down. Next, I tested the polycrystalline panel, which really surprised me. I expected the reading to be lower than the monocrystalline panel, since they're both 50 watt panels, but it was actually higher. It was 20.03 volts when it was laid flat on the ground, and it reached a maximum of 20.31 volts when it was angled. Monocrystalline panels are always expected to produce a slightly higher output than equivalent polycrystalline panels, contrary to my test. One possible reason was that the polycrystalline panel had an extra row of solar cells, 36 total cells compared to the 33 cells that the monocrystalline panel had. The next test was measuring their performance in shaded conditions. When portions of the monocrystalline panel were covered with a sheet of paper, the output dropped from 19.24 volts to 18.85 volts. When larger portions of the panel were covered, the output dropped to 16.8 volts. The polycrystalline panel behaved similarly. When portions of the polycrystalline panel were covered with a piece of paper, the output dropped from 20.18 volts to 19.84 volts. When larger areas were covered, the voltage dropped more significantly to 17.3 volts. Still really impressive. I assume that both panels were wired in parallel and not in series, Otherwise, the output would have dropped to almost zero. Temperature coefficient is another way to compare the panels. The temperature coefficient of Pmax for the Renergy monocrystalline panel is minus 0.44% per degree Celsius. This means that the panel will lose 0.44% of its max power for every degree Celsius over 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. This temperature coefficient of minus 0.44% is much higher than their older solar panels, which were minus 0.23%, so I'm not sure why it's increased. I couldn't find a spec sheet for the polycrystalline rich solar panels, but I did find a video where they claimed that the temperature coefficient of Pmax was minus 0.45% per degree Celsius, so it's very similar to the Renergy panel. Finally, let's discuss their costs. Due to higher manufacturing costs, monocrystalline panels are more expensive than polycrystalline ones. This 50 watt, 12 volt Renergy panel that I bought off Amazon costs $75. On the other hand, this 50 watt, 12 volt rich solar polycrystalline panel that I also bought off Amazon costs $60. Now it's not just the upfront cost that you need to consider. Typically, you would need more polycrystalline panels to produce the same output as monocrystalline ones, which means that you'd pay more for racking, inverters, optimizers, etc. At the end of the day, your entire polycrystalline system might be the same cost as a monocrystalline one, even though these panels are cheaper. So in conclusion, should you buy a monocrystalline or a polycrystalline solar panel system? Well, it doesn't matter what you think! Polycrystalline panels are now a solid competitor to monocrystalline ones, in 2013, monocrystalline panels had a market share of about 36%, but it has since dropped to below 25%. The type of panel that you buy doesn't really matter, the quality and the brand do. Cheap solar panels have just inundated the market, including Amazon, but these cheaper solar panels are poorly made and they're disposable. They're going to have shorter lifespans and the efficiency is going to degrade much faster over time. So that's your trade-off. Hope you enjoyed that video on monocrystalline and polycrystalline panels. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. 
Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. See ya.